Now we will continue our discussion of the heat capacity or uh, molar specific heat if it's per mole. Uh, and we have seen uh, in the classical case de Long Petit Law, which states that the uh, heat capacity uh, must be independent of temperature. The molar specific heat of a solid should be equal to 3R independent of temperature. It is uh, all, uh, assuming that it is basically dominated by uh, phonons, atomic uh, lattice vibrations. Now, in Einstein's model, uh, we start taking into account quantization of energy because the energy of an oscillator is quantized. Uh, normally, the harmonic oscillator, quantum harmonic oscillator energy is n plus one half h bar omega, but if we neglect the zero point. Uh, quantum kinetic energy, then we have n h bar omega as the energy levels. And n goes from 0, 1, 2 to infinity, so n is an integer. So what is the probability that an oscillator in the end state is in the end state? Uh, it is given by, uh, the probability distribution is given by uh, the Boltzmann factor, exponential minus uh, energy level divided by thermal energy, Boltzmann constant K times temperature T, absolute temperature T, and this is basically canonical distribution. So you have an atomic oscillator that is in thermal contact with the rest of the uh, lattice and uh, which is acting as a, a heat reservoir. So you can uh, think of this as a small system in contact with a large system, in thermal contact with a large system. So therefore, canonical distribution applies. So what is the average energy of a harmonic oscillator? Now, using the canonical distribution, the average energy by definition, statistical definition, is the, the value it can take for the end state multiplied by the Boltzmann factor, exponential minus En over Kt, divided by the partition function, which is the sum over all states e to the minus en over kt. So if I substitute for the energy n h bar omega, h bar omega comes out of this sum and takes values from 0 to infinity. So this is going to be h bar omega times, you can see that I have here in parentheses, uh, by definition, the... Uh, average value of n. So h bar omega average value of n. So average value of n is sum over n equals 0 to infinity. <clears throat> the values it can take multiplied by the probability uh, function e to the minus n h bar omega over kt divided by the partition function. Now what I do is I define e to the minus h bar omega over kt as x. So you can see that with that definition, the average value of n becomes sum over n equals 0 to infinity n times x to the power n divided by n equals 0 to infinity summation x to the n. So what is this summation? n equals 0 to infinity x to the n. It's an e to the minus h bar omega over kt. So this is a geometric series. It's given by 1 over 1 minus x e to the minus h bar omega over kt is uh, less than 1. Uh, that's the assumption. And uh, with that, if you take the derivative d dn, n equals 0 to infinity x to the n, you will have uh, the derivative of x to the n and x to the n minus 1. So x to the n minus 1 is x to the n over x. So 1 over x comes, comes out of the summation. n equals 0 to infinity and x to the n. So the derivative of x to the n, n equals 0 to infinity summation is 1 over x, n equals 0 to infinity, n x to the n. So uh, the, that, that's basically the derivative of uh, the sum n equals 0 to infinity x to the n was 1 over 1 minus x. So derivative of 1 over 1 minus x with respect to x, that is minus 1 over 1 minus x squared multiplied by the derivative of the bottom, which is minus 1. So it's going to be 1 over 1 minus x squared. So if I substitute these results here, so for, I, uh, for, the, for the top sum over n equals 0 to infinity and x to the n, I have this result 1 over x sum over n equals 0 to infinity and x to the n is 
1 over 1 minus x squared. So I take x to the right hand side and I find that the numerator is x over 1 minus x squared. So that is what I have uh, in the numerator here. In the denominator, I have basically 1 over 1 minus x, which is going to be, because it's in the denominator, 1 minus x. So the average value of n, you can see here, is x over 1 minus x squared multiplied by 1 minus x. They cancel x over 1 minus x. So that's, if you take this into x parentheses, 1 over 1 over x minus 1, 1 over what is 1 over x? x I have defined to be e to the minus h bar omega over kt. So it's e to the plus h bar omega over kt minus 1. So therefore, I find that because the average energy is h bar omega times average value of n, it's h bar omega divided by e to the h bar omega over kt minus 1. So this average energy of the oscillator at absolute temperature t is known as the Planck distribution. So if the quantum harmonic oscillator has angular frequency omega, it has an average energy equal to h bar omega average value of n. So uh, we can th there's another way to say this. A vibration mode with angular frequency omega will have on average an average value of n, 1 over e to the h bar omega or kt minus 1. That is basically the number of phonons associated with it at temperature t. So temperature controls how many phonons are associated with a given mode. And you can see that it's uh, the average value of the phonon occupancy is given by Planck's distribution. Uh, the total average energy associated with the crystal of n atoms, capital N atoms in three dimensions. So this was for one quantum harmonic oscillator. If we have three n of those, then it's going to be 3n h bar omega e to the h bar omega over kt minus 1 to the power minus 1. Uh, so that's going to be the end result for the total energy at temperature t. Now, in order to find the heat capacity, I have to take the derivative of the energy with respect to temperature at constant volume. So uh, I look at my result, 3n h bar omega. 3n h bar omega is not affected by this derivative. The e to the h bar omega over kt minus 1 to the power minus 1 is affected. It's, the derivative will give me a factor minus 1, e to the h bar omega over kt minus 1 to the power minus 2. Then I have to consider the derivative of the inside, which is e to the h bar omega over kt, uh, e to the x, and the derivative of x with respect to t, so that's minus h bar omega over kt squared. So uh, you can see that the minus signs will cancel and I multiply the top and bottom with k to obtain uh, 3n h bar omega. Now I have another h bar omega over kt squared. So 3n h bar square omega square. Since I multiplied the top and bottom with k, I have a k. And then I had kt square in the denominator. That becomes k square t square. I have the e to the h bar omega over kt that came from the derivative divided by e to the h bar omega over kt minus 1 parentheses squared. Now I define h bar omega over k as Einstein temperature. So this is uh, the characteristic temperature uh, for this discussion. And if I have the number of atoms equal to Avogadro's number, that's one mole, Na times K is the universal gas constant, so this becomes 3R. Um, and you can see here H bar omega over K squared is theta Einstein squared divided by T squared. Uh, and then I have E to the theta Einstein over T divided by E to the theta Einstein over T minus 1 squared. So this is the end result. Basically, the molar specific heat, the heat capacity of one mole, is given by this temperature dependence. Uh, it's proportional to 1 over t squared e to the theta e over t divided by e to the theta e over t minus 1 squared. Now, uh, for this result to be valid, there is one thing I have to check. In the high temperature limit, when the quantization of energy levels becomes uh, unimportant, um, quantization of energy becomes unimportant, I should recover the classical result. So that's what I'm going to do here. 
So if you look at the temperature is much greater than the Einstein temperature, theta Einstein over T goes to zero. So if I call that X, theta Einstein over T is X, basically CV is proportional to X squared e to the X divided by e to the X minus one squared. So if I take the limit as X goes to zero, X squared will give me a zero in the numerator, e to the zero is one, one minus one squared, so zero over zero. I use L'Hopital's rule, I take the derivative of the top, 2x e to the x plus x squared derivative of exponential e to the x, divided by 2 e to the x minus 1 derivative of e to the x is e to the x, e to the x is cancel, and I find limit x goes to 0, 2x plus x squared divided by 2 e to the x minus 1. If I substitute x equals 0 again, I will obtain 0 over 0. One more time L'Hopital's rule. 2 plus 2x divided by 2e to the x, and I substitute x equals 0, which gives me 2 divided by 2, so that is 1. So basically, I find that this whole thing, theta Einstein over t squared, e to the theta Einstein over t divided by e to the theta Einstein over t minus 1 parentheses squared, that whole thing becomes 1 at high temperatures. So the limit as t goes to infinity, cv is equal to 3r, that is Dulong putty law. So indeed, the, this analysis done by Einstein leads to the classical limit 3r at, in high temperatures. Now, in the low temperature limit, uh, when theta Einstein is much greater than t, then what I have defined as uh, x theta Einstein over t will, be, will become infinite because t is going to zero. So uh, I look at my CV value, 3r x squared e to the x, e to the x minus 1 squared. Uh, so the first thing I do is I multiply top and bottom with e to the minus 2x. I obtain x squared e to the minus x and parenthesis squared e to the x minus 1 e to the 2x minus 2 e to the x plus 1 multiplied with e to the minus 2x. That gives me 3r x squared e to the minus x e to the 2x, e to the minus x gives me 1, minus 2 e to the x, e to the minus 2x gives me minus 2 e to the minus x, and then I have e to the minus 2x. What happens to this as x goes to infinity? So I have x squared e to the minus x. Now x goes to infinity, these 2 e to the minus x and e to the minus 2x are becoming 0, so I obtain e to the minus x divided by 1. So that is the limit as x goes to infinity, 3r, x squared divided by e to the x, that's infinite over infinite. Uh, so I use L'Hopital's rule, I take the derivative of the top, 2x, derivative of the bottom, e to the x, and that becomes infinite over infinite again. One more derivative, 2 divided by e to the x, and that becomes 0. So I find that Cv approaches 0 as temperature goes to Zero. And how does it approach uh, zero? You can see here, this is the way it approaches. It is e to the minus x. So e to the minus uh, theta e over t. That's how it approaches uh, the uh, uh, zero limit. So uh, I have defined um, here, I have uh, defined x as theta Einstein over t, so e to the minus x is e to the minus theta Einstein over t. Okay, so the end result is that in the high temperature limit we have a constant value 3r, dulong petit low. In the low temperature li limit, the Cv must go to zero exponentially. Uh, but if you look at the experimental result, the experimental result suggests Cv is proportional to t cube in low temperature. So this functional behavior is not quite right. Uh, however, it does go to zero, so that's better than uh, the classical result. And uh, we recovered the classical result at high temperatures. That's also very good. So Einstein showed that the behavior of CV is related to quantization of energy, but did not quite capture the low temperature behavior with this model.